Norma NXD non-expanding defensive ammunition. And this stuff was sent over to, to me by one of my Patreon members, Edward B. So thank you for sending that. And what this stuff is, is it's kind of like the fluted extreme defender type bullets, but instead of being made out of solid copper, they're made out of a polymer copper matrix. So kind of in the same way that concrete is, or is stronger than cement, this is kind of the same thing here. It's like, it's like the plastic is the cement and they put copper filings on there to make it look concrete. So then you have this very strong copper polymer matrix bullet here. So it's interesting. It has a little bit different flute designs than some of the other polymer matrix bullets I've seen, like the uh, ARX and other type of bullets. Uh, but this one's a little bit different here. So it should be interesting to see what we get. So we're gonna do a nine millimeter versus 380 ACP. And our nine millimeter, is a 65 grain rated at 1730 432 foot pounds and our 380 acp is a 56 grain rated at 1283 feet per second 205 foot pounds reason for the weird ratings is the, you know this is european ammo i believe so they're using meters per second and when you convert over to just to feet you get weird things like 1283 feet per second so i'm going to use my four inch barrel ruger security nine to test the nine millimeter and my 3.7 inch, it's actually 3.68 inch, to test the 380 ACP because this is kind of like a scaled down version of this, you know, because the 9 millimeter is a longer cartridge. It kind of gets similar overall barrel travels, bullet travel in the guns. So that should be a pretty fair way to see how these compare to each other. So interesting ammunition. So I am going to go through the current graph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test. And I'm gonna, just going to do a best potential shot where we're just playing clear ballistics, and that's that. And this other half here, I'm going to have, I just got a layer of you know t-shirt here, followed by three inches of clear ballistics to represent our pectoral muscle, followed by a quarter inch MDF, medium density fiber board, to represent hitting ribs or sternum, and to uh, more clear ballistics. And this will represent more of our real world simulation. You know, half of this here is MDF. And the other half is not so we'll see how our best potential compares to our more real world simulation with those two cartridges and then i am going to shoot up my steel and see what kind of practical accuracy i can get so let's get started with this test all right i'm about five yards from the target four yards from the chronograph first up we have our nine millimeter rated at 1730 feet per second let's see what we actually get 1739, 1722, 1707, 1743, 1754, let me run one more here, 1721, so definitely rated velocity out of this four inch barrel, they are consistently impacting to the, uh, to the left there. So that's interesting. Now our 380 ACP is rated at 1283 feet per second. Let's see what we actually get here. 1314, 1307, 1231, 1337, 1297. Above rate of velocity and spot on point of aim. So that's looking good for that. And the recoil was significantly less with the 380. So let's hit our ballistics gel block and see what we get with these. All right, nine millimeter, best potential shot, plain gel. Let's see what this does. All right, let me hit that with the 380 ACP now. Let's go take a look. All right, so interesting results here. Uh, our nine millimeter drifted up a little bit. A 380 did not, but what we're looking at here is, you know, even in this first three inches here, you can kind of see some damage going on. There's a lot of just good damage going on there. 
So that's pretty good. And we have pretty typical damage going on uh, that looks similar to like the Extreme Defender style bullets. And we got a penetration with our 9mm of 14.5. Our 380 ACP is just enough penetration at about 12 and a quarter inches. So it looks pretty good. Now with these, you know, they're not going to expand more or less when we hit a barrier. So I'm kind of interested to see what will happen here. I think theoretically they should go less than what we want to see. But let's find out. Let's put on our quarter inch MDF and see how they compare. All right, nine millimeters through more of our real world simulation. Let's see how this does. All right, let's try our 380 now. All right, I'm going to do that one more time because... You know, this thing fragmented and some of it passed up the side of the block. So we go a little more center with our 9mm, try to get a better shot here. Right, now let's try our 380. All right, 380 ACP. Let's see how this does. Let's go take a look. I did find it kind of odd that um, this piece kept flying off. I generally only see that with like 357 Magnum and stuff like that where there's enough back pressure against the MDF to cause the MDF to kind of shove this back. So that's kind of interesting there. And what I'm seeing is some really weird stuff going on here. And with our two 9mm shots, it almost looks like they're tumbling before they hit this. And the same thing kind of with our 380 ACP. And I did find a little piece of this here, a piece of the bullet. It's definitely crumbled down to, to nothing. That's interesting. Maybe it's not a piece of the bullet, but I don't know where else that would be. <laughs> And the first shot with our 9mm, the main part of the bullet passed up the block, but we still have a chunk in there at about 10 and a half inches. And the other part passed out here at about 12 inches. Now our second shot with the 9mm, we have a couple different fragments in here. And I'm going to show these bullets, pull them out of the blocks out here in the field to show these. So I'm not going to like show measured pictures like I normally do. So just mentioning that uh, but we have one fragment that went to about seven inches and then another one about seven and a half the main part of the bullet went to about 15 and a half inches so we did get more penetration that's just because we lost some of that bullet now with the 380 acp this was less affected and we went to about 10 and a quarter inches there with our 380 acp because it didn't fragment and there wasn't a whole lot of power there so that's some interesting results to say the least. Wasn't really expecting to see it like that. So let's, let's open up this block and take a look at those bullets. Also, I just noticed, I didn't see that when I was uh, actually filming. This thing didn't feed properly on that next shot. It's sticking out stovepipe, but it's the whole cartridge. I don't typically have issues with this pistol. But it was the last round. I actually have had that happen before with other ammunition that was kind of warm. So I don't know why it's pushing out the last round like that. So here's a look at the gel block from my side here. When we saw it originally, here's the top. Other sides. So let's cut into this. All right, so these are our bullets after going through plain gel. No change to either of them. It's a 380 over here. Here's our 9mm. And when we look at it going through our MDF, it's a little bit different here. Now with the 380, there was no change to that bullet. I can't see really any deformation. I mean, it looks like maybe it is squished just a little bit. Slightly squished on the nose with the MDF. But when we look at our 9mm going through the MDF, this is our main part of the bullet. This is the biggest chunk I could find, the nose busted off. So it's hitting with a lot of force. Now this would not be considered a fragmenting bullet even when it hit, hits hard stuff because fragmenting has to be like less than 10% of the bullet remains intact for each piece. And I think even hitting steel, 
we get bigger than 10% left, so it can still injure somebody so it's not frangible, basically. So let me shoot up my steel and see what kind of practical accuracy I can get now. All right, 25 yards from the target. Let's see what kind of practical accuracy I can get here with this nine millimeter. I'm gonna aim center mass, fire slow. Let's see where this hits. All right, so it is drifting a little bit to the, to the left, but it's not as significant as what it was at uh, five yards, so. 3D ACP, let's see where this hits. All right, it looks like I pulled one a little bit to the right, but for the most part, both of these are combat accurate, so let me back up a little more, see if we can keep this accuracy going. All right, 50 yards from the target. Why not? Let's see what we got. Our nine millimeter. See if I can make a hit. All right, not too bad. Impacting a little low. 388 CP. If this will hit from that far. All right, not a problem. Try to get one more. It looks like I pulled that one. I think I suspect it went high. It looked like they were kind of favoring high. This ammo smells a little weird. You know those little firecrackers you have when you're a kid or sparklers? They smell like that, the ammo, when it fires. Interesting. <laughs> Let me back up to 75 yards. All right, 75 yards from the target. I always like doing this because it tells me a little bit about the ammo. You know, it tells me how consistent it is. And a lot of people like to talk about, why are you doing that? That's, you can never legally do that. Stop a threat from that distance. That's not really the point of this. And there are extreme situations, so I'd rather have the knowledge or have the skill and not need it than the opposite. So, nine millimeter. Let's see if this will hit from 75 yards. Oh, yeah, that's center. And this is that surprises me with how it was drifting so far to the left at five yards. So they are drifting just a little bit high at that distance, which doesn't surprise me with such extreme velocity. Weird stuff like that happens. That's not a surprise. With this, I'm wondering if it's shooting high, if it'll level out by the time it covers that distance. So I'm the same center mass. See if I can make any hits with this. Here we go again on the very last round. I think that's a problem with this pistol. So I had that happen with other ammo. One more, let me try to make it count. So with this, I think actually, it's starting to drift to the right at that distance. I was starting to see some impacts off the target. And that's kind of one thing that you, you see when you get lighter bullets like that, sometimes once you reach kind of their maximum speed for you know, sh shooting straight and, and, and spiral incorrectly, they start to just kind of like a musket ball. They're gonna go wherever they wanna go, they destabilize. And I've seen that with a lot of light bullets like this. And it looks like, just from what I can tell, that the 65 grain moving at that velocity, by the time it hits 75 yards, it's probably still going 
1400 feet per second or something like that or maybe 1300 because they do lose a lot of momentum being light it's still fast enough and heavy enough that it's going to keep going straight and i'm thinking what's happening with these you know 50 yards is kind of our, our max range before they start to destabilize and once we go to 75 they kind of go all over and that's something that i wanted to know because you know extreme situations happen if you're going to carry a certain ammo you should really know those limitations of it you know it's like back in 99 in columbine there was officers that carried glock 21s their threats were exactly at tw at 75 yards they were trying they had the shots they saw the guys on the roof area or something they could not make those impacts because they didn't train for that so to me it's important to know stuff like this even though you were like one in a million to ever have to use it so that's why i do that and it does tell me a little bit about the accuracy the ammo and the accuracy compared in combination with my handguns so what i'm seeing today from this is interesting overall i'm going to say the nine millimeters seem pretty good in all regards other than that five yards was you know drifting a little bit to the left it was still impacting in one hole that's good at 25, 50, 75 yards, the accuracy was on par with Jack of the Hollow Point ammo. And our penetration was enough in all the situations that we went through. So as far as 9mm goes, I can't say it's better than a Jack of the Hollow Point. What I am going to say is it seems pretty close. Now with our 380 ACP, you know, people use this stuff because they don't want to get clogged hollow points. Or you know, they might as well use a ball ammo if... if they're going to use a 380 and what i'm seeing from this is i don't think going to something like this is a good choice for 380. i think you have a lot better options i personally believe a non-expanding lead core hollow point is better than using something that's supposedly supposed to cause hydrostatic damage and all of that because that hollow cavity oftentimes slows it down so it doesn't over penetrate like ball and sometimes we often see a lot of extra damage with an unexpanded hollow point versus whether it's expanded or not versus ball because there's just something about the way it impacts it still does a lot of damage and there's some circumstances where you can still get expansion so to me it just makes more sense to carry a jacket a hollow point or maybe carry a ball in 380 rather than try to go with something like this and try to simulate what you think a hollow point expansion would look like so that's my review of that. Thanks to Edward B. Thank you again for sending that. I'm going to say 9mm, okay. 380, not so much. It's enough for me to, to take my HSTs out of my 9mm pistol at home. No. Is it enough for me <laughs> to change out the gold dots I carry in this typically? Absolutely not. But it looks like it'll work. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like. And thanks for watching. <laughs>